A reading comes from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 45. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to where, wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. May God help us to understand his word. Amen. Twenty odd years ago at England football matches, one could see banners among the crowd reading, David Beckham walks on water. One might think the banner mildly blasphemous, but the person who wrote the words probably believed that David Beckham's football skills were so miraculous he could do anything, perhaps even walk on water. This miracle seems to many to be the most spectacular of all, the miracle to beat all miracles. Though these days we might reasonably ask, what's the point? Healing miracles do someone some good. Feeding the 5,000 helped satisfy some people's hunger. Stilling the storm may have saved the disciples' lives. But what is the point of this miracle? Well, Mark must have thought it had a point, or he would have not have recorded it. He doesn't normally go in for stunts and sensationalism. In this passage, he draws our attention to three things. Firstly, the importance of getting God's perspective. In verse 46, Mark writes, After leaving them, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. We might quickly pass over that statement without noticing it. But Mark writes nothing that he does not think to be important. But why is this important? Didn't Jesus pray every day? To be honest, we don't know. But what we do know is that Mark only mentions Jesus praying three times. Once, at the beginning of his ministry, when he was still calling his disciples and building his team. Once, in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he approached his death. And here. 
But why is it important for Jesus to pray at this point? Just before this passage, we hear of Jesus feeding the 5,000. They had followed him at a considerable distance around the lake on foot and had listened to him teaching all day. And they had been fed in the same way that Moses fed the children of Israel in the wilderness. One can imagine the amount of adulation he received more than any pop star. They believed him to be God's chosen Messiah, the saviour of the nation. John's Gospel records that the crowd were minded to make Jesus their king, to free them from Roman rule. Jesus dismissed the crowds and the disciples and got away to pray by himself in the mountains. He needed to distance himself from the human perspective and to get God's perspective on his ministry, to get himself back on track. Maybe we need to do that occasionally. Our temptations and our struggles will be different to the ones Jesus faced. But there will be times when the struggles and temptations of life around us threaten to overwhelm us. Then we need to get alone with God. It doesn't have to be in the mountains, it can be anywhere. We just need to get alone with God to pour out our soul our problems, our pressures before him and to wait for him to put them in perspective and to show us his way forward. Sometimes all that is needed is to still our minds and to stop them endlessly worrying for a while and things will seem a lot clearer when we come back to them with a quiet mind. Sometimes in the time of prayer, God reveals a way forward we would never have thought of. Sometimes he just assures us of his power and love for us and gives us the strength to go back to the struggle. But however God chooses to work, when things hit crisis point, it is time to get alone with God in prayer and get his perspective. Secondly, Mark draws our attention to the importance of realising who Jesus is. This is the message of Jesus walking on the water. Who is it who walks on the water in the Old Testament? The book of Job tells us, chapter 9, verse 8, God alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Ancient Israel was a landlocked country for most of its history. The coastal areas were dominated by the Philistines. It would appear Solomon had a point on the Red Sea near modern-day Eilat, but that was soon lost after his death. Most Israelites were terrified of the sea. Bodies of water symbolised for them the chaos that existed before God gave order to the world. The statement that God ruled over, or trod on, the water assured God's people that he ruled over everything and that he could control any chaos they encountered. Jesus' disciples would have known the Hebrew scriptures well and would have known all of this. Jesus was doing what God alone could do. And when he speaks to his disciples, he says, It is I. Fairly standard stuff, you may think. 
until you consider that the Greek phrase and arguably the Hebrew and Aramaic phrases that lie behind it echoes the name of God revealed to Moses in the wilderness. I am who I am. And Mark notes that they had not understood about the loaves. It was, of course, God who gave the children of Israel bread to eat in the wilderness. No wonder the disciples asked, Who is this? So why did Jesus impress his power and authority on his disciples in this way? There was a long and difficult road ahead. There were going to be struggles and there was going to be suffering. The disciples needed to know that Jesus was in charge and that they should obey him. And they needed to know that he had the power and control over the universe so that he could help them, keep them safe and bring them to their goal. We too need that realisation. We need to know that Jesus is in power in the universe and that his will will be done. And we need to know that he is in charge of our lives and must be obeyed at all times. Thirdly, Mark draws attention to the importance of trusting in Jesus. Believing in your head that Jesus rules over all and has power to help us is one thing. Trusting him to do so when things get difficult and doing what he says, even when it seems hard or it doesn't make sense, is quite another. But if the disciples in the boat had not recognised Jesus when they were in the boat, but had continued to think he was a ghost and let him pass by, they would have been lost. The people on the shore in Gennesaret recognised Jesus too and they brought their sick to, for him to heal. But it wasn't enough just to recognise Jesus. They needed to do something and bring their sick to him. Doing so showed their faith and their trust and the sick were healed. It is important to trust in Jesus not just when he helps you and heals you but also when he appears not to eventually he will lead us by a long and winding road into the fullness of God's glorious kingdom do we feel all at sea are we being buffeted by storms of stress, of danger or suffering? Are we hanging on by our fingernails and tempted to give up? Or are we perhaps too cocky by half and tempted to believe our own press releases? Let us come before God alone in prayer so we can still our overactive minds and get his perspective. Then let us recognise that Jesus is in charge and that all power belongs to him. And let us trust him to do as he has promised and follow where he leads and obey him in everything. Amen.